This video is sponsored by sporadic decision making caused by a lingering urge to be productive and a lack of sleep. Hello everyone, my name is Suki and welcome to my guide to the Samurai, one of the four melee DPS jobs currently in Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. This guide will be aimed primarily at those new to the game or those still learning the job at a beginner to intermediate level. I will be going over the basic foundation and mechanics of the Samurai to give players a solid launching point to begin exploring the job. The Samurai is one of the two jobs added into the game with the Stormblood expansion. The job has a strong emphasis on high personal DPS and flexibility with very little party utility. It has the least amount of positional attacks out of the four melee DPS, and also occasionally has to charge their hardest hitting weapon skills with a short cast time. The Samurai is a very flexible job, which can make it easy for inexperienced players to make poor decisions and lose out on DPS, so this guide will seek to help remedy that. So with the introductions out of the way, Let's get into it. To start things off, let's take a look at the basic combos you'll be performing as a samurai. Completing your combos will fill your Sen Gauge, which will allow you to unleash your most powerful skills. Whilst you go through your combos to build up the three different Sen, you'll also be gaining Kenki, which will fill into your Kenki Gauge. Your ultimate goal as a samurai is to build up your Sen and properly expend them in various ways to gain the most DPS output, whilst also managing your Kenki so that you can utilize it to deal the most DPS possible and without ever overfilling your Kenki gauge. So, let's look at your three basic single target combos. Your combo opener is Hakaze, and this can lead into three different single target combos. Hakaze into Jinpu into Gekko is your attack power combo, and it will grant you the Getsu Sin. Hakaze into Shifu into Kasha is your attack speed combo and will grant you the Ka Sin. And Hakaze into Yukikaze is your slashing debuff combo, and it will grant you the Setsu Sen. When it comes to single target rotation, you will be alternating between these three combos, gaining and expanding your Sen and Kenki along the way. Your combo priority should be the Kasha combo, followed by Gekko, followed by Yukikaze. Once you've managed to gain both your attack speed and attack power buff, and have the slashing debuff on the enemy, you will now be alternating between these combos as you see fit to attempt to keep all three maintained without overlapping and wasting Sen. Generally, you do not want to try and complete a combo if you already have that combo finisher Sen in your gauge already. For example, if you already have the Ka Sen in your gauge, you generally want to avoid using the Kasha combo until you've expended that Sen. As for your AoE combos, you only have two. Fuga into Mengetsu, which will also grant you the Getsu Sen, and Fuga into Oka, which will grant you the Ka Sen. So, how do you expend your Sen? By using your EI Jutsu skills. Depending on the amount of Sen you have in your gauge, you will have access to one of three EI Jutsu skills. Having any one Sen will allow you to use Hikinbana, which is a 60 second damage over time skill that happens to also be your hardest hitting weapon skill once you've totaled up its entire potency. Having any two Sen in your gauge will allow you to use Tenka Goken, which is your AoE damage EI Jutsu and having all three Sen in your gauge will allow you to perform Midari Setsu Gekka, your ultimate EA Jutsu skill that will be the second best weapon skill to use if Hikanbana is already applied. Having talked about your basic single target and AoE rotations, let's now talk about Kenki. You will gain Kenki upon using your various weapon skills. Once you've reached level 62, every weapon skill besides your EA Jutsu skills will grant you a base 5 Kenki. The exceptions to this rule are your combo finishers. Gekko, Kasha, Yukikaze, Mengetsu, and Oka will all give 10 Kenki when performed in a combo, however Gekka and Kasha will require positionals to earn their bonus Kenki. You will have to perform Gekko from the rear and Kasha from the flank. These are your only two positionals as a samurai, and it is highly encouraged to attempt to always hit these skills from the correct sides unless fight mechanics or hazards make it otherwise impossible. Let's now go over the abilities that you can use your Kenki on. You have Kaiten, which will increase the potency of your next weapon skill by 50%. This should only be used on your EI Jutsu skills. Gyoten is a simple gap closer that deals a little bit of damage. Yaten is a disengage which will also proc enhanced MP. This will increase MP's potency to 320. I typically do not like using Yaten or MP as MP will also break your combo. But I suppose if you need to move away from a boss for a prolonged amount of time, this might be your best option for still maintaining some DPS. Shinten is a simple 300 potency attack on a single target. This is where the majority of your Kenki will likely be channeled into. Q10 is a 150 potency AoE attack with no damage drop off. This is useful for when there are at least 2 targets and becomes more powerful than Shinten if there are at least 3 targets. 
Sagan is a 200 potency single target attack that requires an open eyes buff to use. We'll talk more about this when we go over third eye. And finally we have Gurn, which is an 800 potency line AoE, which does have damage drop off as well as a 2 minute cooldown. We've talked about quite a few abilities, so let's break it down a little bit more. In a single target fight, you'll mostly be using Shinten and Kaiten. Kaiten is only worth using on Higginbana and Madari. Higginbana if it needs to be applied, and Madari when you have the Sen to cast it. If you don't have 3 Sen to cast Madari, or you don't need to apply Higginbana, Shinten is your go-to Kenki expender. Gurn is your top priority aside from using Kaiten on Higginbana or Madari, but you do have a 2 minute cooldown on it so that you can't be constantly using it. You do have some leeway with Gurn, as you can effectively hold off on using Gurn for up to 2 minutes in one fight before you've essentially wasted a Gurn cast over the course of the fight. Keep an eye on Gurn and try to conserve your Kenki if you see that it's coming off cooldown soon. Gyoten is useful if you ever get pushed away from a boss and want to re-engage, or need to quickly engage a faraway target and I use it fairly often. And Sagan is technically more potency per Kenki used than Shinten, but requires the open eyes buff, so let's talk about that now. Third Eye will place a 3 second buff on yourself which will reduce the next attack you receive by 10% and will also grant you the open eyes buff. You can expend this buff on two abilities, Merciful Eyes which is a small 200 potency heal and will also reduce your enemy by 20% or on Sagan which does require 15 Kenki. Obviously you don't want to go out of your way to take damage to activate open eyes but there will be plenty of unavoidable damage throughout a fight for you to get to use Third Eye. Maximizing your open eyes to get more Sagan uses can increase your DPS, so I suggest that you get in the habit of using third eye whenever you're going to be taking unavoidable damage. With the Kenki abilities explained, it is now time to discuss the Kenki threshold. This is the amount of Kenki that you can have when finishing a combo before you can cast Shinten and still have enough Kenki to perform Kaiten once your next combo finishes and you need to use Hikenbana or Madare. Some people like to set this threshold at 35, however I personally use the number 40 as it gives you some leeway in case you might be unable to hit your positionals or that you may want to use EI Jitsu in the middle of a combo. When instead taking into account the need to use Gurren instead of Shinten, this number instead becomes 65. These thresholds also apply in an AoE rotation when wanting to use Kyuten instead of Shinten. And since we briefly mentioned it before, casting your EI Jitsu mid combo may be something you'll want to do in some cases. Doing so will not break your combo, and doing this can sometimes be extremely beneficial. An example of when you'd want to do this is if you have 3 Sen in your gauge, but your attack speed buff is about to run out. You could then do your combo up to Shifu, and then use your EI Jitsu so that you can properly expend your Sen before using Kasha and regaining a Sen into your gauge. Okay, now that we've wrapped everything up with the Kenki gauge and the various Kenki abilities, it is time to discuss Hakakuri and its uses. Hakakuri is obtained at level 68 and will drastically change the way you play Samurai. This will allow you to take any Sen in your gauge and channel them into Kenki. You'll gain 20 Kenki for each Sen you channel with Hakakuri. Naturally, you'll want to attempt to use Hakakuri to concern 3 Sen whenever it is coming off of cooldown. Hakai Curry has a fairly short cooldown of only 40 seconds, so you'll be using it very often. And also because of its short cooldown, it can be very easy to waste some Hakai Curry uses throughout a fight. There are some key things to note about using Hakai Curry though. First off, generally speaking, you do want to try and use Hakai Curry to consume 3 Sen in the majority of situations. However, if there is ever a prolonged break in a fight where you may be unable to gain all 3 cents to consume for some time, it may be appropriate to consume whatever you have so that you're not wasting any potential Hakakuri uses as the fight progresses. Next, Hikenbana does take priority over Hakakuri. If Hakakuri is off cooldown or coming off cooldown and you are at 0 or 1 sen and Hikenbana needs to be reapplied, reapply Hikenbana first before building sen to consume. Another thing is, if you know you'll be using Hakakuri soon to consume 3 Sen, you should ensure that your Kenki gauge will be at 40 or below to ensure that you do not overflow on Kenki and waste any. Sometimes this can mean double weaving a Kenki ability before using Hakakuri. And a final note is that you should be keeping a close eye on Hakakuri's cooldown to see how you'll want to utilize your Sen. Generally speaking, if you've just used Madari to consume 3 Sen and you look and see that Hakakuri is at less than 20 seconds before it is off cooldown, then chances are that your next 3 sends are being built up to be consumed by Hakakuri. 
This is without taking into account the time remaining on Higginbana, or if Meikyo is available to use, however. It is just a general rule of thumb. Moving a little further into that scenario though, if you are at 2 cents with Hakakuri having about 10 seconds remaining, then you can opt to use a mid combo Hakakuri consume. The idea here being, even if the last sen you need to fill your gauge is Setsu, then using Hakaze into Yukikaze followed by Hakaze into either Jinpu or Shifu, whichever one you choose to use, will allow Hakakuri enough time to come off cooldown to use to consume your 3 sen before using your next combo finisher. In theory anyway. If your skill speed is particularly high, this particular scenario may not work out, but hopefully you get the idea. You might need to do some quick thinking to make efficient uses of Hakakuri. The next ability worth talking about that we mentioned a little bit earlier is Meikyo Shisui. This will essentially allow you to perform any three weapon skills without the proper combo prerequisites. Generally speaking, you'll want to use Meikyo to build up three sends, regardless of how many are currently in your gauge. You are given 10 seconds to use your 3 weapon skills under Meikyo, meaning that if you need to, you can perform an EI Jutsu in the middle of Meikyo and still have enough time to use all of your weapon skills before the buff wears off. So if you already have Sen in your gauge, you can get to the maximum 3, expend them with EI Jutsu and still have enough time to gain the rest of your Sen with the rest of your Meikyo uses. One thing to note is that you can have Meikyo and Hakakuri available at around the same time. Should you choose, you can use Meikyo before Hakakuri to build up the Sen you need to consume. However, by doing this, you will gain a substantial amount of Kenki, so be sure to be expending your Kenki quickly to leave enough room in your Kenki gauge so as to not overflow it. Another thing to keep in mind with Meikyo is that gaining Sens this way by using your combo finishers can make your attack speed or attack power buff timers begin to fall low since you'll be bypassing the uses of Shifu and Jinpu. When using Meikyo to gain the Getsu or Ka Sen, look to see whether Shifu or Jinpu has the highest time remaining, and use the corresponding combo finisher so that you'll be able to reapply whichever buff will round out first with a traditional combo. When using Meikyo in an AoE situation, you can use it to first gain your Jinpu buff and then on Mengetsu and Oka to gain your Sen to use on Tenka Goken. Following that train of thought, let's talk a little more in depth about your AoE rotation. Like we discussed earlier, you only have two AoE combos, Fuga into Mengetsu, which gives you your Ketsu Sen, and Fuga into Oka, which gives you your Ka Sen. You'll generally be using these combos to gain two Sen to use on Kaiten Tenka Goken. Using Kenki thresholds we discussed earlier, you can use q or Gurn if you have the appropriate amount of Kenki, that being 40 once you finish your combo to use q or 65 to use Gurn like we discussed before. You should only worry about applying Jinpu, and in the case that you need to apply Jinpu, you should ensure that you use Fuga Mengetsu beforehand so that you can gain your Getsu Sen by using Hakaze, Jinpu, and Gekko. If there are at least 5 enemies to AoE, you can forego applying the Jinpu buff and simply only use AoE skills. However, I find that taking the time to reapply Jinpu can help you conserve TP in the situations where you are running low. Let's now quickly go over any other skills or abilities we might not have discussed earlier. NP is your only ranged weapon skill, and it can actually combo off of your disengage ability, Yaten. Without using Yaten first, this skill will only deal 100 potency, but in solo cases, or just instances where you'd like to pull enemies from a distance, this skill can be useful. Generally, I do not use NP or Yaten in an actual fight, unless I know I will need to disengage from a boss for an extended period. Ageha is an ability that you'll only be able to use if the target's HP is below 20%. It will deal 250 potency and will also grant a 10 Kenki. Use this as it comes off cooldown. If it happens to gain the killing blow, then it will also grant you an additional 20 Kenki, but don't count on this happening very often. And lastly is Meditate. Fairly straightforward. In any situation where you have no target to attack and can afford to remain still long enough, using Meditate can help you gain extra Kenki depending on how long you can channel it. A lot of samurai I see tend to overlook this ability, even when they are idly standing by with nothing to attack. Look for opportunities to use this as often as possible. Let's now quickly go over your role actions. As of patch 4.4, you can now take all 10, but there are certainly some that are more useful than others. Second win is a small and reliable self-heal. Arm's length will prevent knockback and draw-in effects. This ability is extremely useful. There are a lot of Stormblood content that utilize knockback effects, and using this can help you keep uptime on the boss. Leg Sweep is a 3 second stun. 
useful for interrupting certain smaller mobs, but bosses are usually immune to stun. Diversion is absolutely vital as it will reduce the enmity you generate by 90% for 30 seconds. As one of the hardest hitting jobs in the game, you'll naturally gain a ton of enmity over the course of a fight. So ensure to use this at the start of a pull and to continue to use it throughout a fight to keep your enmity as low as possible. Invigorate will restore 400 TP and sits on a 2 minute cooldown. TP usually is a non-issue unless a fight has no or minimal breaks or in AoE situations. If your TP ever dips below 600, then you can use this. Bloodbath will convert a portion of the damage you deal into HP and lasts for 20 seconds. This does require you to have an enemy to attack for you to gain a benefit, but overall, with the large amount of damage that you deal with Samurai, you should get a lot more healing from this than from Second Wind. Goad will allow you to put a TP refresh on a party member. Useful to put on other physical DPS during AoE moments or possibly on a tank. Faint will lower the target's strength and dexterity for 10 seconds. Great to use to help mitigate physical tank busters. Crutch will remove the heavy and bind status from another party member, but you cannot use this on yourself. Honestly, not too many places this sees much use. And finally, you have True North, which will nullify all positional requirements for 15 seconds. You only have two positionals on Samurai, but it is still worth using in those situations where you may be unable to get to the rear or the flank and to still get the maximum amount of Kenki possible. And before we wrap up the guide, we can quickly discuss openers. I personally only ever use a 1 cent or 3 cent opener, and I'm sure there are many more out there that you can find to best suit you and your party composition. I mostly play Samurai casually with random people through the Duty Finder or Party Finder, so I really don't consider lining up my stuff with those random people and their own buffs. The two openers that I use will be in the description of the video. I tend to use the 1 cent opener more because I find it easier to execute. This opener is better if there are no early breaks in a fight, however it does suffer if you happen to have a about 950 or more skill speed or receive any attack speed buffs such as the arrow or fey wind. The 3 cent opener is more useful if you have a higher skill speed. Again, I really just alternate between these two openers. There are certainly more and you can switch things here and there to better align things for your party if you are in a raid group. As for stats, it can really depend on the style you prefer to play with samurai. I personally lean more into crit since I also like to play monk which shares gear with samurai and having a crit build can synergize particularly well with dragoons, bards, and scholars. However, skill speed builds are also a decent choice once you have gotten used to the basics of samurai. This allows you to build up Sen and Kenki faster and overall offers more flexibility to the job but can be more tricky to play until you've gotten a firm handle on the job. If you're looking for a more in-depth perspective on openers and stats then you'd probably want to ask a samurai with far more expertise than myself. And with that, this is the end of the guide. Hopefully this has given you a basic idea of the samurai so that you can jump right in and get to learning this job. There are more advanced things about samurai that I shall leave to the veterans. I have a ton of fun playing samurai and I just wanted to make this quick introduction to the job for those who are still trying to learn it. If you enjoyed the guide, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I have other guides on my channel for the White Mage and Astrologian where I go far more in depth and have much more expertise, so if that interests you, be sure to check those in the description or in the eye icon on the top right of the video. I also just play a bunch of Final Fantasy XIV, so if you want to check out all of my other contents, then those will also be in organized playlists on my channel. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video. Sayonara, bye bye.